Hello, Luke here. I would just like to take a moment to disclose up front that we sometimes talk about sensitive topics in our podcasts, and in fairness to our audience, we will try our best to put specific warnings in the descriptions of each episode. Now on with the show. Who stop cars on the highway? Local cops if we don't change our ways. Or at least keep five off the road. Calling everybody chicken fuckers. Remember when Max started a high speed chase? Ruined a dummy, put rabbit in his place. Heard he got trapped in a big rig. Well, with a repeater that'll happen. So they shutting us down, they're shutting our station down, shutting our station down, shutting our station down. They're shutting our station down. They're shutting our station down. Yeah, the boys in the back of town. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Nice. And uh, welcome to the, to the Nostalgia Killers podcast, where we revisit films from our youth to see if they still hold up or should be inserted into the great DVD player in the sky. My name is Luke Loans. With me once again, almost as always, is Chuck Starzinski. Hello, hello, hello. And almost again, as many times, Javier Martinez. Here I am, reporting for duty. And special, special guest, Casey o- O'Connor? Connell. O'Connell. O'Connell. <clears throat> so special, could have learned his name twice. It's <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> this week we watched Super Troopers. Yeah. We've got a ragtag group of highway patrol officers trying to save their jobs by outwitting the local police. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I, I would put it more as a unsupervised group of cops yeah, yeah. Wreaks, yeah. wreaks havoc in small Vermont town. Exactly. And made some small successes you know, yeah. here and there. A lot of bits <laughs> and then kind of a plot maybe. It's it's the uh, let's save the recreation center, but, yeah. but with police. and <laughs> Exactly. No ski off. No ski off this time. Uh, starting with, the, this is our first show of the season two. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah. And uh, we'd uh, like to kind of start off this season uh, teasing off the Sonic Death Bucky Top 5. So if you listen to the end, you will hear us uh, go over our Top 5 movies depicting places that we wish we worked. That's right. Those dream jobs. Yeah. And uh, also, our new, a new little moment is our honorary Sam Coughlin spoiler alert. If you haven't seen this movie that's over 20 years old, there are spoilers ahead. <laughs> yeah, this movie is about to get its, uh, you know, BA in college. Um, yeah, that's it, how fucking old this movie is. You can yeah. vote and drink. Don't be mad at us, Sam. <laughs> I think that only speaks to how old we are. Oh, yeah. No, this was oh, one no, of those. Was... When I saw like the release date, I was like... Ugh, 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 ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was it? 2001? 2001. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, good. But then also I look at like my, my nostalgia for the movie and I'm like, oh yeah, that tracks. I feel like every time I do that where I have like a full on existential crisis about getting older, I'm like, well, yeah, yeah you were, but how old were you when this came out? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's fine. Yeah. And we, yeah. We, it's happened a lot with this show where we don't, we don't choose to look at the 90s and 2000s, but we just happen to pick the movies that, that happened in from 1993 to 2004. Yeah. Like, yeah. The movies that shaped us basically. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. What's, uh, what's your nostalgic attachment for Super Troopers? Oh, good. We're going to start really low. <laughs> no, no, I really like the movie. Uh, I've never had like a super, super attachment to it. You know, it's okay. not like in my top That's 10 fine. comedies, but I really like it once in a while. It's a good, simple movie, which actually made like, you know, thinking about all the questions like kind of hard for me mm. than it probably would have been for like Pirates of the Caribbean or something like that. Mm-hmm. Just because it's a very simple plot. Yeah. Just like a few this fights here and there and then just kind of like goofing around but it's good yeah. it's good watch likewise i don't have a ton of a nostalgic attachment towards it per se i remember i did see this movie because casey and i had watched beer fest together did we watch beer fest first we <laughs> did, you? We did. Oh, i'm, I'm oh, fairly okay. certain yeah, oh, you yeah. Know what? i think you're um, right. so for those of you who aren't familiar casey's one of my oldest friends yeah and, um, and like super troopers yeah. probably wasn't available to you guys when it came out right well yeah probably now yeah, yeah, or at least not super relevant i guess right. yeah. well we would have been younger so yeah, yeah. we would have been like 11 or 12 or something so oh maybe, geez yeah <laughs> maybe not not quite there yet uh yeah we saw so we saw beer fest i really like that and then i'm pretty i'm pretty sure like i said casey was the one who told me hey they did all these other movies like uh, super troopers right. and so i checked out super troopers and only saw 
it that one time. I actually have only seen it once before today. Whoa. Whoa. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was in middle school when this came out, uh, so I was definitely its target audience for sure. <laughs> um, I, yeah, my friends and I quoted and referenced it into the ground. When I got older, it definitely also became like that go-to background movie at a party. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I've seen it easily over 40 times and was not surprised at all to find out that I still know the script verbatim. Yeah. Like I yeah, was watching so it and like, weird. there was a moment where I was just like, oh, I was gonna pause it. I was like, I kinda gotta pee. And then I was like, no. Nah. So like literally like walked away to the bathroom, was basically reciting lines to the bathroom, <laughs> used the restroom and came back. And then was just like, yep, there it is. Yep, large farva, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I, this movie yeah. came out one month before my 21st birthday. Oh. So that that's, um, and I was in the Coast Guard. I think we were at sea when it came out. So when we hit, we hit shore, we like all went to go watch it. And uh, it was just a, an immediate hit. Like um, wow. quoting the line. I mean, as you do with people you work with and, and work and live around, you quote the lines and you begin to communicate in in that in that kind of tone and, and jokes and stuff. And in one of the places I worked, eventually ended up only communicating in movie quotes, <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of kind of as yeah. a challenge. And we found that with this movie, there's a quote for every. Thing you need oh, yeah. in life, in in a work day, in in everything. You don't have to. Yeah, this, this movie has is so dense, joke wise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just great. No, this movie and Anchorman are like the epitome of that. Like, what did we do before memes kind yeah. of thing? Of like, oh, it was just like yeah. five dudes standing around in a circle smoking cigarettes, just saying movie quotes back and forth. That's what we did before memes. Okay, yeah, yeah. the epitome of that. <laughs> But yeah, this is a. Uh, uh, I've watched this over a hundred times. Yeah, nice. I was gonna say forty. Was, I think was like a huge under desk. Yeah, it was like. Yeah, it was. It was just always on, even at work. Sometimes I've I've watched this movie a lot. I'll, I'll let go of a nitpick a little early today. It was the first time watching it. I got the Saint Anki's joke. What is the Saint Anki's joke? Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Is it Saint Anki beer? Mm -hmm. It's just stanky beer. Oh. <laughs> Oh, same. So you guys didn't get it either. Good. Oh, yeah, no, I never got that. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's just stanky beer. It's like saying An Anki doesn't mean anything, but if like put the ST in front of it, stanky beer. Uh, there we go. Mm. Yeah. That tracks. I mean, it's the kind of beer that, you know, high school kids would be ordering. <laughs> up illegally. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how about you guys' uh, favorite scenes? Well, uh, I'll, do, I'll do you one better or worse. Ooh. I checked my calendar. Right. Last time I was that guy with spooky season. So I'm gonna have to be that guy in case you guys didn't see it coming. Javier uh, Martinez <laughs> Javier Martinez coming in playing Javier Martinez. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, I did not enjoy this movie. Whoa as much as I remember yeah. enjoying Th it. That's fine. I that I can understand, especially since you haven't seen it. So since it, like the first time you watched right, it. Right, right. So it hasn't been that big of a part of your life. I mean, I wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like, when, you know, like Freddy vs. Jason where I was having an awful time. Like I just fucking hated that experience, right? It was, you know, but I just like, I don't know, I just didn't laugh as much as mm -hmm. I remember or I thought I would. And I don't know, a lot of the jokes, I don't know, I just felt like I was like, oh, huh, yeah, I get it. Oh. But uh, so I so I don't have a lot of praise. So I'll say the few things that I do have. We're all this, this podcast is just <laughs> slowly revealing that Javier Martinez is a broken, broken man. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> have terrible taste. <laughs> And I, maybe this will reveal how I feel about it. The fact that my favorite scene out of the entire movie was just when we cut to Thorny sitting at the computer. Click, and wait, click, 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 and enhance. 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 I actually was dying during that. I was, I, and it was like such a surprise because I was like, you know, for the rest of the film, I was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah. you know, so I, I was like, oh, this is really fucking funny. If you're, if you're familiar, you know, for, the, for those of you that aren't familiar with, uh, that trope in movies where they, you know, zoom in on pictures and that enhance, yeah. you know, like that's not a real thing you can do in real life. <laughs> yeah. You know, and obviously they're playing to that. And it's just, yeah. Would I, you have kept laughing, laughing if you had said it like three more times? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's my favorite. That was my favorite scene. That's okay. the scene that I laughed at the hardest. I really like just every scene with uh, what's his name Brian Cox, uh, the the chief. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. yeah. I just like how like kind of angry he is at them, and just like why are they? Why, why did he hire any of them? Yeah, <laughs> like, is, it, yeah. <laughs> is is he just mad that he can't be like the rest of them? Like he was obviously one of them at one time, just to you know goof off and. Oh man, what if there's a prequel where you actually see him more joyful, and then when they knew they were gonna get canned, he got all cranky. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What if, he, what if he was the worst? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just like all the brawls <laughs> they get into. Just police fighting police is just funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> awesome. And 
the whole beginning the beginning is great it's like probably one of, that's like mm-hmm. the best part of the movie i think besides the end but yeah yeah i was gonna say that's my favorite scene hands down it's just the cold open yeah like the stoners getting pulled over oh yeah and like yeah. that whole interaction of just being like ruthlessly like sadistically fucked with it's just like oh it's so good and then it's like also a beautiful brilliant intro to all of the cast of characters like yeah. the entire police force and whatnot like yeah. you have mac doing his prank of like you know racing up the road pretending to be you know some redneck who stole like <laughs> a porsche basically and then just yeah you've got everybody chasing and you learn like everybody's little tropes of like okay that guy's like a shitless layabout Mm -hmm. this guy's the rookie this is the like example setting guy who still likes to have fun and so you get like a beautiful introduction (laughs) to all of the officers yeah i totally agree yeah like it does it beautifully you understand who they are yeah (laughs) right in seconds like even just like having like just seeing farva's lips too like (laughs) Uh, uh, a very strategically placed (laughs) nose hair yeah Uh, yeah. that's that's what i remember most about that Uh. Uh, uh, mine's the uh, chugging syrup scene. Uh, oh, just a uh, oh. one, <laughs> two, three, do it. You know, then. Yeah. This is the first time I ever watched this movie with subtitles too, because I was taking notes. Like I didn't, he know he said cup the balls. Yeah. The entire this entire for like twenty years now. Yeah. Like he, I always thought he said something completely different. Like you know, just like cup the bull, like cup the like basically like just actually giving him tips on how to like drink out of the bottle. Yeah. It's like oh no, it's a dick sucking joke. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that went over my head. I got um, poutine. I didn't. I never really picked yeah, up on that. I thought he said until, protein this whole time. I thought it was protein, but he's oh. like, they're talking about going to Canada. He's yeah. Like, yeah, poutine. Poutine. Yeah. Because I, I learned what that is in the last couple of years. So. Yeah. And I know that you usually put like like little tidbits from movies. I don't want to like steal that from you, but I heard that like the that was real syrup that they were drinking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, like yeah, they got sure. massive headaches. Oh, know. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, sure they, <laughs> they tried <laughs> shooting it with iced tea. Like, and so it's iced tea in the uh, wide shots. Mm-hmm. And then all the close ups, it's like, oh, dude, that looks like you're drinking a Coke or like an iced uh, tea like, or something. Like, you can tell, oh, like, you tell it was like, too goopy. thin. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a little loath to admit this, but this movie did burr copycats, kind of like Fight Club. Mm-hmm. So we, I have been a part of a syrup drinking contest. <laughs> oh, no way. Whoa. And it looks it, exactly like it does in that movie. But the, <laughs> the syrup, when you pour it in your pancakes, you, you think it's thick and syrupy. But no, if you pour it out of the bottle, it's kind of watery. Oh, yep, man. done it. Sorry. Co- coats the mouth. <laughs> it's your, your government money at work there. <laughs> I guess I should be glad uh, they weren't chucking, you know, ketchup. ketchup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, just, I can keep going. It's up to y'all. Go but, for it, man. You're, yeah, just you're, the one-liners in general. Just oh, like so this many. constant string. Like this one was a really hard band name episode because I was just like, I had like 30 band names. <laughs> yeah. Like, it out. Yeah. And then just Farva. Just the concept of Farva. Uh, yeah. He's the only, like, I mean, there's a few that are actual cops, but he's like, oh, that's a cop. <laughs> that is like, <laughs> that is the epitome of a police officer. Like, yeah, that could be a real cop. I have been yeah. pulled over by that man. <laughs> like, just that, like, time bomb of a human being where you're like, oh, and you're like, is, let's not kill anybody. Let's not, you know, it's like, this was a traffic violation. Let's just talk it out, guy. Like, <laughs> take five deep breaths, Farva. Exactly, please, for the love of God. <laughs> and then, yeah, just kind of like to bookend it, like the closing party bust. Like the whole, like, bringing back yeah. the, like, high school stoners and all of that was just such a beautiful, just, mm. Chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. If you were my wife, I'd massage your feet until you fell asleep every night. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about the delousing. It's oh god, it's powder sugar. It's delicious. <laughs> the lice hate the, the, the sugar. Lice hate the sugar. <laughs> I could I, I could recite the entire movie to you guys right now. I have some refraining from doing it, but um, no, I'm, I'm ready to move on. If you are, yeah. You guys got any, I mean, I'm sure Javier's got some nitpicks and oh. fixes. And kind of. Kick it off me, man. <laughs> I mean. So I'm, I'm, before we go, I'm, I'm curious, did you like Beer Fest? Well, here's the thing. I've definitely seen Beer Fest a couple times. Not a yeah. ton, but a couple. Right. And I do remember really enjoying Beer Fest. Do you think Beer Fest is better written than this? Mm, <laughs> Putting the pressure on. I think it's about the same, to be honest. Okay. Well, I mean, Cause for, well, for, I mean it's got to be a little bit better if I saw it a few more times. If I was willing yeah. to see it a few more times than I saw Super Troopers. So for, for me, who's, who's, who watched them as they came out, okay. there's Super Troopers and Club Dread, and then everything else fell off. I hate yeah. Beer Fest. Mm. I, I, hate, I hate all the others, wow. pretty yeah, much. Beer Fest was like 2005, 2006, something yeah. else, or a couple years after. I remember liking Beer Fest when it came out, but also I was like, I don't know, like 17 or something when it came out. So yeah. I'm also curious to see. Like, I haven't really watched it since I, I was 17. I just haven't seen them grow at all. It's the same jokes. Yeah. It's the same... Mm 
thing. I still love them. They, I, and I would, you know. They found their, like, you know, happy Madison shtick, basically. I think that's the, like, yeah. my biggest complaint about these guys is they just basically became, like, B-grade Adam Sandler movies as they got right. older and continued on. Yeah, that's I fair. Mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so not, I'm not, didn't mean to cut you off, but like I was really <laughs> curious what you thought because I I've never experienced a person who hasn't seen this a million times like I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you know that might have something like you said, you know, that might have something to do with why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, like you no. quoting it over and over, yeah. like watching, like I said, like using, I said, I using it, it as like way more times, using like, it as a language. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. So I don't know. Yeah, no. that's cool. No, that's fine. I totally understand it, and and I know tons tons of people who do not like anything they do. Oh, I'm not, not fans <laughs> of Broken Lizard. Like it's a poor aisle. It's it's childish. You know, yeah. it's like and you, you would expect certain group of people to just not like anything they do. I guess that speaks to the gene pool of my friends. Because, like, I haven't really met anyone who doesn't like this movie. Like, this I'm is, like, oh, this yeah. This is how you pick your friends. Exactly. I'm like, super troopers, and everyone's like, oh, that one fucking slaps. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, any any nit super nitpicks or fixes? I guess, like, the main things I have, it, it doesn't go far enough. Like, it doesn't push the envelope far enough. Oh, interesting. Like, I don't think it's, like, like I wouldn't say it's, like, a raunchy comedy or anything like that. Hmm. Like, at least, because that maybe just I've seen, like, way more... I, I I guess, I guess I'm going to add to that, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but it's also not like PG-13 enough to just kind of be like a, you know, like a... Generic just, teen sex comedy yeah, number it's seven. Just, it's just like somewhere in the middle. And so it almost like feels like, like it's kind of stale. I, I, yeah. I just like, I just, I felt, I felt it was stale while I was watching it. Well, I see what you mean. It's not like innocent, but it's, it doesn't go like beyond, you know, yeah. a certain threshold. Yeah. yeah. And so I feel like, for example, like I'd be watching it. I felt like some of the jokes could have gone on more, like a little bit funnier if it had been a little bit more cruder in mm -hmm. certain instances are a little bit more explicit like oh, okay you are talking about whatever a penis versus just like they kind of alluded to yeah. mm -hmm. a penis but then they didn't you know they kind of just moved on to like whatever the next joke was and i was like oh okay like well that's that's, that's also something i noticed watching it today it doesn't go over the line mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. and i'm i have been watching it for too long to like be bothered by that but i've also kind of thought about it as what we may be experiencing as a class like a classy joke movie mm. to where nobody's picked on nobody's being like yeah no, no one's being mean to anybody everything's mm, a prank yeah, yeah so i've got that in my hot take later okay yeah yeah and my only rebuttal i guess to your point javi is just that like this movie reminds me of like a 90s snl movie in the vein of like it's the same level of fun tongue-in-cheek less cruel less crude version Version. Like it's like it's in the vein of like a Wayne's World Tommy Boy kind of thing where mm -hmm. it's like oh yeah yeah we're laughing at the fact that Chris Farley's being a fucking piece of shit right now but mm -hmm. <laughs> we're also not deliberately like you know going for blood yeah. Well, this this also has a little more um, advanced. I don't want to call them the jokes, but like subtle digs. Because there's a lot, and there's actually a lot of swinger stuff in here, mm. which you don't see in a lot of places. And, oh, they, yeah. and they don't go into it too much. You just see them, you know, in the bedroom together, and, and like, but like the entire movie is revolves around them having a swinging session, mm, mm. <laughs> basically. Yeah, <laughs> the people they pulled over. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, I don't know. You, you know what? It, you, okay, you, uh, I remember I'd written something down, and I to better kind of describe how I felt towards it. To me, it felt like you know when you're like walking down the street. And you like overhear somebody's conversation mm -hmm. like, you, like you might overhear something like oh okay like i can tell that this guy's like a really funny person but i just kind of walked in like halfway through the joke so i don't like i didn't get the full laugh of it you know mm. that seems like a cool dude and then you kind of just walk on right versus like you were there for the full joke gotcha so this film kind of felt like you know i mean obviously you know broken lizard the comedy troupe right but it just it felt like a lot of like not inside jokes but just like like i feel like it would have been really funny to be part of the movie and to be part of broken lizard and to like be making that and i just feel like yeah like it was just it, it's a lot funnier to them i think than right. it is to everybody else which i guess is probably true for most kind of actors and comedians mm. but i just felt like i picked up on that a lot like that's how it felt to me like i'm, I'm watching somebody else's somebody else having fun and i'm like oh okay like, <laughs> Gotcha. Good felt, for them. felt like an outsider. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, man. That's okay. <laughs> we'll include you next time. <laughs> <laughs> so the only other nitpick, which was like super minor that I had, was I feel like the female, the dead the dead woman in the dog collar, mm -hmm. I felt like that's like way too dark. Again, because it's like <laughs> the movie doesn't ever go like that far again. So it just feels like really like, oh, shit. That's like a woman chained up. Female imprisonment. I mean, later you find out she was like a drug kingpin. I mean, not that that makes it any better per se, but... 
Yeah. Oh, but they, there's a pig in the closet. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But then it's just like, oh, yeah. the like, I'm like, oh, there was like a, well, a woman chained up, <laughs> dead, like in a, you know, face down in a hmm. bowl of dog food. I was like, that's pretty fucking dark. That is. Well, you know? it goes a little darker if you watch it 10 million times and, 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 you, and you realize the scene that they walked up to is that she died right then and there the, with, by the hands of those cops inside the trailer. Oh, mm-hmm. man. I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> it's also like, yeah, we don't know if she's a drug dealer, actually. Like, yeah. Oh, no. oh. Yeah, sure. She was just in the way. Yeah. Whew. Man, that opened things up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that, no, I love the, when people go deep with those. Yeah, it's, while uh, we're deep, while the wounds are open, while the scabs are there and unhealed. Do you have any nitpicks, Luke? <laughs> no, I already gave mine. It was just I was angry at myself for not getting the stanky beer joke. Like, uh, I'm over it, I guess. How about you, Casey? Uh, really no nitpicks. To be honest, like watching it again after not watching it for a while, I found it very refreshing because like a lot of modern comedy movies are just like there's too much chatter. There's mm-hmm. they, they, they it's like usually just like action comedy where so much is happening like an action movie with blowing up stuff. This was just like very refreshing and nice to watch. It was a very solid comedy. I mean, I guess yeah. the only thing the only things I usually nitpick movies for is like if something like if they set up their own universe everything makes sense within that universe then then that's great like they introduced it as like a bunch of dumbass cops and that's what it was the whole movie so i'm fine with that <laughs> except they should have taken farva out back and shot him like a long time ago like <laughs> how was he ever a cop? like first of all like yeah, none of them you know a couple of them might be fine cops but like farva and again why did the chief let him back on like let him back in a car when like the, their jobs are on the line yeah. like the last got minute the damn unions now oh. back in his day they would have yeah. taken him out back chief you know i'm not a union guy <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm still on your side, bud. Um, oh, hello, Shirley. Yeah, I guess like my nitpick is really it's a nostalgic nitpick. So it's not an actual the movie nitpick. I used to put this on to pass out to at the peak of my late teens, early 20s partying phases. And so there is nothing more painful than to wake up to the DVD selection menu of this movie oh, yeah. with a light hangover or the spins. Menu is just the sound of a car starting and backfiring, police sirens, and then ugly radio chatter. Like, oh, <laughs> breaker, breaker, non. <laughs> And then it's like a bad bass line, like a doom, doom, doom. And then just like, woo, woo, woo. And like, <laughs> gong, 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 gong. And it's like, wow. and that's, yeah. And like they recorded 10 seconds of audio. And it just loops. Have you ever seen Spun? Yeah. It's like the getting the woman in Spun getting tied to the bed and locked to the, the, the skipping record. Oh, well, that's exactly how it feels when yeah. you have a bottle of Gatorade. Yeah. To you. <laughs> like, that's what I'm imagining you going through. Yeah. No, it's like, it's like 22 year old Chuck just <laughs> like night out, you know, till 4 a.m. at the bars and whatnot and just like, oh, this is <laughs> oh Jesus. I did not know that. I don't think I've ever, ha- ever had the DVD. Yeah. I definitely, this was a DVD purchase for sure. Wow. And then my other nitpicks are just really simple shit, like all the clunky exposition dumps. And it's just because it's a comedy. And so it's like, we're having fun. We're telling jokes. And then they hit this wall. We're like, oh, fuck, this is a movie. Plot needs to happen. We need to move (laughs) things along. Okay, we're going to synchronize our watches. We're going to sneak in, break in, do the Winnebago thing, get back in town. Mm -hmm. Perfect. (laughs) We're going to tell you all of that, not just show you that. (laughs) The Foster Ursula love story feels really tacked on. I got something about that later. but uh, They can't all be winners. So like Foster (laughs) has to be, he's the weakest character. Like. Yeah. of the f- crew like mm-hmm. you're just like ah he's like the least funny one because yeah. they can't all be farba you know <laughs> <laughs> that's all i got really for nitpicks how about a rainy day double feature what would you what would you watch with this movie if you're stuck in a day like today when it's raining like crazy outside <laughs> oh it's pissing sideways <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i i kind of had two which kind of again mm-hmm. went to like towards like well either they should have gone this way or they should have gone that way you, you went for satisfaction <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so i either have team america Okay. Or police. Or police academy. All right. Nice. Hmm. All, All right. right. One, one through nine? <laughs> a, a, a police academy. <laughs> police academy is yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, the box set. <laughs> yeah. And again, that's that's like an extreme of either, either sure. way. And so yeah, I, I can see that. What I wanted out of this. So. Did you get one, Casey? Yeah. So if you want to go with another kind of crime comedy, I would go with uh, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, but if you want to go with one, a good another comedy from like that time period, I would go like Euro Trip. Yeah. Oh, that's a hot take. 
<laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time. That's a hot take. You're a trip being a good movie. Right. <laughs> and the, the question whether or not Casey gets invited back has been answered. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just coming kidding. back to the Euro trip episode, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Which we probably will do Euro trip because that's like I saw. Yeah, I think yeah, we have to. I've got nostalgia for that. Like, I, I saw that. Theme. We have to. No yeah. way, really. Uh, With yeah. my mom. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Cool. She loved it. <laughs> <laughs> What do you got, Chuck? Uh, I had Anchorman because kind of okay. like what I touched on before, it's just as obnoxiously quotable and it was in heavy rotation at the exact same time mm-hmm. when I watched this into the ground. Hey, you guys want to smoke a joint and watch a movie? Like, hell yeah. Let's put something funny on. Let's put on Super Troopers. And it's like, oh, fuck. What if we put on Anchorman? <laughs> and then the other like two people in the room are like, oh, fuck. Uh, is there a third option? <laughs> no, no, there isn't. <laughs> All right, cool. So it was like, yeah, two sides of the same coin. All right, I'm, I got uh, Club Dread, which I love I don't know if you guys do you guys remember watching that one I actually really like Club Dread <laughs> it's these guys same guys but doing an extremely competent genre movie a horror <laughs> film yeah have you seen, you've seen I it I have yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I think I, if my memory serves right, I think I like that better than this movie <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah it's just uh, I, I love that they had the I don't know the money I guess and the power to go and do that because mm-hmm. they obviously loved it I would be super down sure. to revisit that one like I haven't uh, that was like I definitely owned like a two pack kind of thing of, right. like, Club Dread and oh, nice. like Super Trooper Oh. Walmart like discount bin you know ten dollars kind of thing. <laughs> so that uh, as Bill Paxton as the uh, oh coconut Pete. coconut Pete. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the, you think oh. any money has to deal with this shit? <laughs> what was it? Oh, uh, his his hit song. Pina Coladasville. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, Pina Colada Bird. Yeah, oh, Pina Colada Bird. Not Vivian. Yeah, it's yeah. like just a classic Jimmy Buffett ripoff. Yeah, then that's yeah, and that's for me. Like I was down in Florida at that time with dealing with people just listen to Jimmy Buffett all the fucking time. If you're on a boat anywhere, it's like uh, <laughs> thank God somebody made fun of him. <laughs> wow, this and, is so good. What's and, the secret ingredient? Well, it's coconut peats paella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so like shrimp. <laughs> Coconut peats <laughs> paella. Uh, so I did go on the uh, Broken Lizard website to prepare for this, uh-huh. and in their merch, Ooh. you can actually get a vinyl of coconut peats. Ah, no <laughs> way! Oh, yeah, you, oh, can like, you can get one signed by like the cast, and then like the actual one. That's, that's pretty cool. That's fun. awesome. Because <laughs> they did actually record songs. Oh yeah, I'm right. remembering that now. It's, it's part of the, like, in the soundtrack. You yeah, hear it in the movie. Yeah. That's great. That's actually <laughs> well, yeah, they incorporate that in the plot with yeah. like the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's I did not think about that that's awesome right on and then uh, onto this movie's cocktail yeah before we go into this movie's cocktail i'm gonna go off script because this is one of the few movies i can slip this in that's right it's time for chuck and julia's cock talk ladies and gentlemen <laughs> bays and bends <laughs> fucking kevin heffernan the guy who plays farva hangs dong in this movie out of the blue this was uh my first like ever actually seeing a male actor naked in a movie before i remember i was so <laughs> shocked like as a teenager so i was like oh yeah it's like a stoner like comedy with dick and fart jokes and i was like oh that's a real dick <laughs> that was a real fart I don't know if I like this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was mildly scarring at the time. Like, just because it was the first, like, oh, yeah. A lot to take in. Well, it wasn't really a lot to take in. It was very cold in that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. More, more of an acorn. Is, uh, yeah. yeah. Just covered in exactly. powder in this jail cell. But it yeah. wasn't a huge bit. You know, just a little tidbit for the pod there. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we are on to this movie's cocktail. So today we've got a large farva. So you've got half an ounce of cognac, half an ounce of a bitter amaro, half an ounce of a sweet amaro, topped with cola. Serve on the rocks, and remember, you can dimpasize your drink for just 25 cents. <laughs> Come on, it's just a quarter. <laughs> Punch oh. says your face. <laughs> I can handle this, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, that was a way to also slip that in. I can't believe no one talked about the uh, burger scene. Too easy. I know. Everyone knows it. Still good, though. Yep. I also love that in the ad, like the commercial for the movie, they make you think that it's like, oh, the did this punk spit in my burger? Like, is what triggers the punch? Yeah. I love that he's like, does that look like spit to you? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. And he's like, ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, like, it's some 16 year old's like loogie. So like, oh, fuck. Hold the spit. <laughs> it's for a cop. Yeah. Just saying that's what makes him good. Don't spit in that cop's burger. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, the drink is good. Spit. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's an awesome cocktail, man. It's, um, what's Amaro? So, <laughs> Italian digestifs. So, uh, is, it, is it like Amaretto? Like, uh... No, like, so things like, spoiler alert, uh, we are not sponsored by any of these companies. But things like Fernet and like Maletti. I'm getting, I'm getting mint. Oh, like, that's the Fernet, baby. Oh. Okay, the Fernet. Gotcha. Yeah. Very good, man. Again, we are not sponsored by Fernet Bronco. But if you'd like to sponsor us, Fernet Bronco, uh, <laughs> that would probably actually kill me. Because. <laughs> <laughs> 
probably be dead in a week. Send a crate. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and with that, we'll go on to our first ad break. Ad break. And we're back. Welcome to Nostalgia Killers Trivia, where we try and stump our guests. And uh, let's kick things off with a little bit of film trivia. For better or for worse, the Broken Lizard comedy troupe write and direct all of their own movies. Which trooper directed the film? Casey. Jay. Can, can you say his name? <laughs> <laughs> his first name is Jay. That's right. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. <laughs> Thorny. Uh, Jay Chendi Sekar. Ch- Chandra Sekar. Chandra Sekar. Yeah. Sekar. I was going for the Preston Lacey pronunciation. Oh. That's how I know. He's in, <laughs> he makes a cameo in Jackass number two. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And oh, he's right. like, oh. Jay Chandi Sekar. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, that's right. Uh, directed by Jay Chandasekhar. <laughs> Question number two. What was the inspiration for making Super Troopers? Was it A, Steve Lemmy's multiple DUIs and run-ins with the law? B, Paul Soder's tryouts for the police department? C, Eric Stolhansky's family stories about being on the force? Or D, Kevin Heffernan's reoccurring improv character, Officer Farba? I have no idea, but I'm going to go with D. I'm going to go with A. It is A! <laughs> Luke did not answer, but yeah, it is A. Uh, yeah, Steve Lemmy wrote this movie because he was constantly getting pulled over. The opening scene actually was the first treatment. It was going to be a short film yeah. where basically they were just going to play like the, the team themselves were going to play the stoners and like one cop basically. Um. And that's where the whole like premise came from. He wanted to know uh, what it would be like if cops actually had a sense of humor. So he wrote a script where they did. <laughs> because uh, yeah, he got hassled a lot. <laughs> Question number three. Making movies is all fun and games until someone gets hurt. Which trooper got sick and rashy by committing to the bit? Bing! Casey, once again. Is the officer rabbit during the the shaving cream scene? Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. Oh, it wow. is oh, rabbit. Fuck. So Eric Stolahansky <laughs> actually got sick twice. He spent half a shoot vomiting in his trailer after the syrup chugging scene because he has a weak stomach <laughs> along with those little weak bird lips. <laughs> he also received mild skin burns due to the shaving cream bit. Uh, the crew did not realize that they picked up a whole case of mentholated shaving cream. Oh, oh fuck. And so, yeah, they were like, well, we're not going to spend another $100 on shaving cream. We're going to use the menthol one. In the scene, you can actually like kind of see like his skin red <laughs> like oh, really? on the outside of where the shaving cream is. Wow, did not know that. Ooh. Ugh. All right. Question number four. Is it true or false? 50 50. Anyone can buzz in, not just Casey. <laughs> <laughs> true or false? Jim Gaffigan, who makes a cameo as Larry Johnson, has actually played another version of Larry Johnson in film and TV. Luke. True. True. That's right. <laughs> he actually portrays the murder suspect, Larry Johnson, on an episode of Law and Order. <laughs> no way. That's Whoa. funny. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, and, that was intentional? Was like, uh, no, this was just like literally the Law and Order thing happened basically in tandem. So it was like, uh, it wasn't like Law and Order <laughs> writers were like, oh yeah, that, just making the same character and it wasn't vice versa. Both uh, both departments just used the same name generator online and yeah. Larry Johnson was the Larry, <laughs> Larry Johnson was very, yeah, very normal white guy. Yeah. <laughs> Also, for a bonus fun fact, Heffernan hated Jim Gaffigan because they were, you know, both doing stand-up, coming up at the same time, and Jim Gaffigan basically got half of the things that he auditioned for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <that's funny. laughs> Question number six. Who does Farva call a chicken fucker? Is it A, the executive producer and his wife? B, the actor's own real-life parents? <laughs> or C, the managers of the improv club where Broken Lizard got their start? Luke. You jumped the gun. The, on that his one. parents, yeah. Yes, that's I've, I've right. I've known this since the. No since way. <laughs> I, I would have guessed that because that's like parents. it's a funnier story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they didn't know what he was going to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but but they were they were in the movie. Yeah. Uh, nice. <laughs> Question number seven: True or false? Once again, we've got of all the Broken Lizard films, Super Troopers had the highest box office. True or false? Luke, I would go with true. False. Oh. Believe it or not, Super Troopers two, which I have not seen. Uh, made thirty-one million dollars opening weekend. Super Troopers one only made twenty-three million. Did you adjust for inflation? I did not. Yeah. Yeah. You, know well, what yeah. you know what? Though that doesn't make sense, though, right? Being such a kind of like uh, we were, we were, kind we were of thing. like there's anticipating a lot of anticipating the second yeah. one for so long. Yeah, mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah, that thirty million that is everybody sense. going to see it one time. 
Yeah, and they, they, they were already they, established after all the rest of their movies. So, yeah, yeah, that does make sense. They had more people too. I think wasn't Willie Nelson in there? Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they were like throwing you know it was money into the flames. Basically, they were just like, all right, who can we pay off for? Kansas? Yeah, <laughs> Let's go. it was a fun, it would cost more to make though, right? Oh yeah, because the Super Troopers cost three million. Yeah. Like, can you imagine making a movie for $3 million? It kind of looks like they did at times. Yeah. Like, I well, it looks exactly like they did, but they pulled off like an opening weekend of like $20, like yeah. $20 million. And it's like, fucking insane. Fucking hell. Javier, I totally remember when we, when we were in class and we were, you told me that like they were going to make it and then they're asking oh, yeah. for like, you know, you can get like their signed posters for like, you know, if you donate this much mm-hmm. to it. Oh, I never ended up donating anything. anything. Yeah, because they like a <laughs> Nico really or cool. something. Right. Or some kind yeah, yeah. Of- we're all, we're all trying to get it made. Yeah. Like for years, I mean. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And we're changing categories. Now we're on alt casting. Still anybody's game. This movie is about as independent as they come, but it almost had studio funding. What famous DC Universe actor was pitched to play Thorny? Whoa. No idea. I didn't, I've it's never... 2001, too. That's a hint. Toby? No, DC. Baflick? Ding, ding, ding. That is oh, correct. Oh, no, we should, oh, okay. I don't know if I should give it to you because you already I, guessed Toby. I, yeah, that's, but yeah. that's fine. No, I, was, I wasn't even thinking of, yeah. But yeah I, I he wasn't DC that, for much actually. longer. No, no. <laughs> but he was, I was thinking about who's, who's DC or Marvel mm. or that, during that time. But yeah, when they were about to get funding, it was going to be the Farrelly brothers producing it. Ah. Oh. So like there's something about Mary. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, yeah, it was supposed to take place in the 70s. And Ben Affleck was going to be the lead. But they were like really against it because they were like, well, the, the whole point of this movie is it's our comedy troupe showing you how funny we can be. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody wanted to make Goodwill Hunting too. Exactly. <laughs> and question number two for alt casting we've got Brian Cox is incredible as Chief O'Hagan, but he wasn't Broken Lizard's first choice. What iconic Coen Brothers actor passed on the role? Oh, is that John Malkovich? Uh, John Goodman. John Goodman. John Goodman. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> nice. Oh. Final lightning round here. We've got two questions for all the marbles, all the jelly beans. We've got the usual suspects. So Brian Cox is in the 1996 thriller Chain Reaction with two actors from two separate films that we've covered on the podcast. Which two films are they? Is it A, Back to the Future and Robocop? B, The Mummy and Tremors? Or C, Freddy vs. Jason and Elf? This is hard. Yeah, I I don't even know. (laughs) I'm just going to say B. I'm going to go with C. A? Ding, ding, ding. Casey is correct. <laughs> the Mummy and Tremors. So Brian Cox is in the 1996 action thriller Chain Reaction with Rachel Weiss and Fred Ward. So The Mummy mm. and Tremors, respectively. Mm. And finally, once again, it's anybody's game. Uh, I will probably edit this and, you know, insert a voice of, you know, like, Casey, yeah. <laughs> Luke. You know. um, but the entire game relies on this question. What other 2001 raunchy comedy features an actress from Super Troopers and an actor from our first episode, American Pie? Came out same year. I feel like there's probably only one woman in this movie. (laughs) But she is in another raunchy-ass comedy from the same year with an actor from American Pie. It's a movie I would love to do. Oh. It's not Linda Carter, is it? (laughs) No. It's the other other only other woman. Uh, Marissa? Mm Mm-hmm. No idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, Freddie got fingered. Yeah. She's in Freddie oh. got fingered right after yeah. this. So Marissa Coughlin, who is uh, no relation to Sam, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> starred in Freddie got fingered with Eddie K. Thomas, who plays Shipbreak, who was in American Pie. So that's mm-hmm. our connection. Yep. Oh. Thank you so much for playing, gentlemen. Ah, oh, God, with warm heart, open arms, tear in the eye. It is so nice to reveal that Casey... <laughs> Won the show. Thank you so much. Just, just, just say all three names right now. <laughs> Woo. Oh my god, I don't know how you did that. That was so that was impressive. God, are you a savant or something? <laughs> uh, before we move on from the from this, I, I did love the trivia thing, by the way. Nice work. I got um, Marissa Coughlin was physically repulsed by Paul Soder. Oh. The, oh, whole, that, the whole the whole love that's a love interest guy. interesting okay. that track he's she, the least the, attractive the reason, one. <laughs> the, reason, the reason it feels tacked on and, and just like part of the plot is because she fucking did not take she, every, she is acting acting wow yeah 
in this movie. What a great She's fucking good because I thought they had great chemistry. That, yeah. that, that's <laughs> exactly right. That's why every time I rewatch this movie, I'm like, oh, she's hating life right now, but she's no li- making it look so good. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that is good. No she poor. works hard for the money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, God, he's all bulbous and like a moose. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she got paid the same as every... I, she didn't. She nah. did not. No. <laughs> but what, weird enough, she was in Super Troopers, too. Well, I mean, it's like, you know... That is got, a trooper. Yeah. 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 I would say super. So, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of super troopers, we'd also like to take this moment to thank the most super of the troopers. That would be our executive producer, Addy Martinez. Ooh, thank you, Addy. Thank you, Addy. Oh, thank you. You know, when this station gets shut down, we'll still have a job for you. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it'll be. But kinda, this joke was not worth well thought out. But, it sounds like you're, you're promising too much. Exactly. Someone play me off right now. <laughs> if you would like to be as cool as Addy Martinez, you can support us for $15 on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash The Nostalgia Killers. And with that, we'll go into our second ad break. Ad break number two. And we're back with Act 3 of the award categories. Second season, new sort of fresh set of awards. We're still starting with my new band name. That's right. It'll and, never go. And we're we're still cutting Chuck short. As I said, this was a difficult one. Like, cause there's so much stick. I feel like comedies are the hardest because it's just like, oh, there's one-liners. That's a band right there. I I didn't even really write any down because they're just all one-liners that are stuck mm-hmm. in my head that are part of my language. Like, it's impossible to like spoof on or spin in any way. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Oh, I got excited. I thought you were saying so. I'm just gonna do them off the dome right now. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my favorite quotes. We, we, I can do that at least. Yeah. Uh, desperation is a stinky cologne. That's, like, <laughs> that's just, yeah. I, I, I see that every time I see someone who's desperate. I'm like. So just to tackle <laughs> the desperation is a stinky cologne. Uh, my band for that is Desperate Stank. They're a funk <laughs> band, of course. Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. <laughs> They're a new wave band. Which is like, well, yeah, it's such a great bit in the intro. It's like, mm-hmm. did you say yeah, sure? It's like, no, I said yes, sir. <laughs> what, did you, what did you say, man? <laughs> well, I said yeah, sure, but what I meant to say is yeah, sure, yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, their hit song, of course, is That's Not Ours, Candy Bars. Yeah. Yeah. Candy Bars. Yeah, exactly. Oh, officer, that's not ours. Candy Bars. Candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> And my final band is Sit Down Rando. Ah, uh, they're a surf rock band. <laughs> and that's in reference to after the syrup chugging, there's like about to be a police brawl. I thought, you're, like, I thought you were going to say they're a syrup rock band. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. That actually, be, that's even be better. Thing. Yeah, wait, never mind. They're like a sludgy, yeah, like metal <laughs> band. Actually, they're a syrup rock band. Yeah, I'll just say a few. Um, we'll take the easy one Party in Jamaica. And that's in reference to their story about partying with ACDC in <laughs> oh, Jamaica. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Obviously, just make it a reggae band. I have Roller Disco. Oh, and that's a term, yeah. right? They're going to close down the police and, well, we could open up a roller disco hell yeah um that's like an indie pop band yeah and then this one i don't know what genre it is uh but i have afghanistan animation yeah. <laughs> it's great chief yeah, yeah I love that afghanistan animation leader of cola <laughs> it's just like a boy band <laughs> denim dan yeah. Yeah. and uh you know that's just like a, a lone country singer older old timer <laughs> prime time for crime time Ooh, Ooh. Uh, that's rap <laughs> I picture that being like very old school 80s rap oh, like uh, uh, like uh, it is prime time pull some crime time <laughs> with that we'll go on to our Roger Deakins would be proud award for cinematography when they're trying to sneak the Winnebago yeah yeah yeah, yeah the, the, the governor's the, visit montage yeah the montage is so exactly. well done it, oh yeah, that's like, right like yeah. the comic panels and they got Farmer thrown up in the yeah, toilet the comic panels there's, cool. there's an editing thing I, like we, we kind of like great. we kind of like didn't want to do an editing thing because I can't like that's think of like a time when we would do it but yeah that's perfect no yeah. it's like yeah. yeah that is one of the like pinnacles of this movie where I'm like that's why I like, that's hard, a really well that's like I really hard good. disagree yeah. with like Super Troopers being the worst of the Broken Lizard movies because I'm like this is where they're like really trying things <laughs> yeah and not just aping like Adam Sandler movies basically mm-hmm so it's like, yeah, like there's so many little things like that in this where it's like, oh, yeah, you guys are like, one of you thought about going to film school. That's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> watching it this time, I was watching it with the with the eye of knowing what I know now about cinematography and lighting and all that. I saw a lot of amateur stuff, which is OK, I think, for this movie, it being their like first big movie. The, the only thing that stood out to me. I was kind of watching the whole movie for it too. It was just at the very end when Brian Cox is reading the letter. There's the very tiny push in when mm-hmm. he when he when he drops the when he hits the drop. It's like and you're and you're you're being still being shut down. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, that was like you almost can't teach that. That's like instinctual. Mm-hmm. So just have it on on a dolly 
and just push in like during, during that one that thing. thing. Yeah, and it's Brian Cox too. I, I don't. We haven't talked about it yet, but how the fuck did they get Brian Cox? That's yeah. So cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I, I think like they got him because they <laughs> shot for John Goodman first. <laughs> and it was like I don't. I mean, even I don't know. I don't I mean, know. Though. Even, still even Cox, then, yeah. Cox was like fucking superstar. Like and yeah. he's, he's loving this movie. He's just, just living it oh, up. And it's like, like a high tier. Like a yeah. I feel like I always feel like it would have been. It should, it theoretically, should have been easier to get John Goodman. He was, in, feel like. he was in Braveheart and Rob Roy. Right. right. And like, <laughs> he's, a good he's like, and he's and he's British or Scottish, and it's mm. like he's playing an American, like northeastern American. Jesus, man. Yeah. Like, good job. Good job on Brian too for like being a, a trooper and like <laughs> like jumping into the role and being the playing the part and. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. I like I like when he's like all cranky, but then again, like towards the end with the whole Winnebago thing when they're at you know that that celebration thing or whatever yeah. it was, and he's just like kind of like sweet talking Farva. He's like, "How you doing, Farva?" Like <laughs> trying to keep him calm. <laughs> Open bar, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, during those comic cut scenes, just like Farva just like yeah. puking in the yeah. toilet like multiple times. <laughs> easy rod, easy rod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually just really love the whole beginning scene when uh, the one guy was pretending to be like you know the the long haired like driver you know crazy mm-hmm. guy is like that in that one they're actually doing like low angle like oh, yeah. car no, driving scenes it's like yeah, okay chase, they yeah. actually had like a choreographed driving scene they hired guys to drive the car so that must have been like a fun scene to shoot too yeah, yeah that, they, did that, they kind of did that twice yeah right yeah. there is another shot where uh, a rabbit is driving the Porsche mm-hmm. oh right yeah. and then they get Farver coming out of the store and they do that whip pan over to see the oh, car just go by they yeah. just barely got that shot like I don't know if that was planned or oh. if that was lucky and I've just got one that we didn't touch on it's uh, during the cold open when the stoners get pulled over and it's the blonde kid like after they've been set, pseudo let go oh yeah yeah and he's like oh man I'm so glad they took off I would have pulled out my nine and shot that pig and it's like a <laughs> perfect timing like rack focus of like yeah. he does the finger yeah. motion to then that's exactly when the car whips backwards yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's like so clean it would be even better and more impressive if it was a one shot but they do cut like when oh, yeah. they turn I thought it was a one shot my whole life and then right. I watched it and I was like oh they cut like right when it hits there and then now it's yeah yeah, different setup, but still, so cool, still super cool. <laughs> it was a great. I mean, the greatest fucking with people scene oh, I know. ever. I think. <laughs> <laughs> like I was almost like those guys. I didn't know what was going on. I first watched the movie. I'm like, they're behind them, then they're not, then they're. I don't know what's going on. You're like, am I tripping? Yeah, yeah. You're like, you feel like you're tripping too. You smell something, rabbit. <laughs> Fear. Fear. You got any more? Um, no, I mean, I guess I got just two little quick things that are like not necessarily cinematography, but sound design. Sure. Just on that same scene when he is tripping, they do like tweak the audio levels. The and, little little kids and the laughing, little kids yeah. laughing yeah. in his oh, ear yeah. on the yeah. Zoom. That's so good. That bit is like so good. It makes me laugh every time, and it was such like a brilliant editing choice because uh-huh. I do not think that was in the script in any way, shape, or form. Huh? Like, I just want to give a shout out to the soundtrack. It's just a good. bunch of really solid. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Butt rock meets garage rock kind of stuff that just like fucking works, it, and it's fun and like. Every time I watch this movie, I'm like, oh yeah. I fr-. Like I look up these bands every time and I'm like, oh yeah, they didn't go fucking anyway. Like it's yeah. like, this er- is the er- only song they ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of like a, a Jackass soundtrack. Yeah, exactly. A lot, a lot of the same mm. like Kentucky I rock and, yeah. uh, and stuff like that. No, pretty it's good. super fun though. Yeah. yeah, every time I'm like, put on Pink Slip and Jeez Louise or Big Bear every time <laughs> once I've watched this movie. Oh man, do we, do we make it an award for fucking a bear in a costume? <laughs> <laughs> if we don't have one, it should exist. It's, we should have one. <laughs> yeah. Completely forgot about that. And watching it again today, I was like, expertly done. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, well, if, I know it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Is he? Is that? Do you need any help? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, I'm like, I give oh, yeah. him props for not just like immediately going. He's like, I don't know how you even like start responding to that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think, he, I think he did well. <laughs> Do you need assistance, yeah. sir? Are you okay? <laughs> All right, we'll go on to uh, Is That Channing Tatum in a Dog Color Award? Um, I already mentioned Brian Cox. Like, the entire movie I was watching, mm-hmm. I was like, how did they get Brian Cox? Like, how did, how's he, or he's not like, it's not a cameo. Jesus, well, yeah. well done. How did they get Brian Cox? How the fuck did they get Linda Carter? Yeah, I, I twice. Was, I was like, why the fuck is, <laughs> is she that, in this movie? Is that Wonder Woman? Yeah. 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 Okay, that was mine. I'm like, oh, that, I, I didn't know who she was, really. So I looked up, and I'm like, oh, she was the Wonder Woman. Yeah, she's was, a, the original so, yeah. Wonder Woman. And I follow her on Twitter and she's actually really cool. She's a like super like progressive and, and just like fighting for women's, you know, liberation and rights actual and all that Wonder stuff. Woman. Yeah, That's actual cool. Wonder Woman. Wow. She's like doing it constantly and she's like She's awesome. Yeah, I gave it to uh, Daniel Von Barden. So he's Barden, yeah. Chief Grady, mm-hmm. like the yeah chief yeah. of police. I know him from Seinfeld personally. <laughs> yeah, me too. He's good. Where he's like, yeah, he's just, yeah, greatest job George ever had is just this like aloof boss who does not give a fuck about the company. Like he's just like, oh, George, you're here. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> so I grew up watching that guy on Seinfeld. So it's just like, oh, fuck. They got right him on. as the cop. Like, that was almost, in my mind, the same level of, like, excitement for seeing Brian Cox. It was just like, mm. oh. Yeah, I could have sworn he was in way more movies. Me but too. I looked up his IMDb. He's probably been in like twelve things. He's he's great though. He's a great character. Yeah. I think kind of he's. I feel like he's got. He's one of those actors that like looks like a couple other actors too. Probably. So you might be like, was wasn't he in Starship Troopers? Like, no, no, that was uh, you know whatever. He also Powers like, Booth or something like that or whatever you know. And he, he kind of stopped working. I think in like twenty eleven and he passed away in twenty fifteen. So oh, that's, oh, that's why we don't, we don't see him anymore. No. But rest in peace. Buddy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he's great. Love it. Oh, I have one more to really quick. Um, mm-hmm. So Jeffrey Arend, the guy who has to eat the marijuana. Um, and I'll be honest, this is not really fucked up. But so, so I saw him and I was like, oh, shit, I forgot he was in this. That's the guy from Devil, which is like an M. Night Shyamalan produced oh, film really? yeah. that I saw that I recognized him from. But more importantly, he's the guy that somehow fucking landed Christina fucking Hendricks. Like he was married to Christina Hendricks. That guy's married to Christina Hendricks. He was. He, I think he oh, literally he just divorced like this year or last year. He was the first Pete Davidson. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, yeah. So, anyways. Wow. Good job, Aaron. Yeah. 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 To be honest, he was like my least favorite part of the movie. That should have been on my nitpick. Like, he just looked gross in the beginning. He does. Look, he does look like, sweaty all sweaty, and gross like, and gross eyes bulging. Uh, and dirty teeth. Yeah, it's oh, perfect oh, casting. He's got the oh, shoes stuck know, in his yeah, teeth. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. so good. <laughs> I like his, his duck hunt impression at the very yeah. end of the credits. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then uh, we'll, we'll move on to why I like Waterworld, a controversial hot take. Um, my hot take is just go watch Reno 911. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's, that's my hot take. Just go watch Reno 911. I would argue that we don't we wouldn't have Reno 911 if oh. it wasn't for this movie. That, that's, yeah. that's probably that's true. Point. That is probably true. But in the world that they both exist, just yeah. go watch Reno 911. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think there is a crossover at some point, too. Oh, really? I think in the, in the Reno 911 movie mm. i believe lemmy and stilhansky oh. are in the background somewhere they make a cameo Whoa. that would make sense i think so that would track how about you luke um i didn't write anything down i had too much fun watching the movie yeah i was i'm, I'm afraid to tarnish this thing yeah i was afraid, gonna say <laughs> afraid to destroy my hmm. nostalgia for it that leads into my hot take which is the most anti-hobby opinion on this movie <laughs> ever as this might be one of the best comedy films of the early 2000s because yeah. it, it holds up so well looking at it from future eyes it isn't homophobic racist or overly sexist like the few yeah. racial jokes are like done well in the sense that it's like oh it's these dumb white guys who don't know thorny's ethnicity basically right. yeah. and like that's pretty fucking funny honestly you know it's, yeah, I don't feel like it? that's really hurting anybody because he also defends himself the entire time yeah yeah and yeah what little propaganda that this movie is it's like severely undermined by how incompetent and shitty the law enforcement are like the f- they're all fucking corrupt they're all a bunch of morons they're all yeah like trying to fuck everybody over and do all the things that we all think cops are doing so yeah mm. i don't really have anything nice to say about this movie <laughs> how's the view from sugar heaven bitch oh god yeah dude so many band names i'm telling you i had a sugar heaven band i had uh yeah I basically had a I had a band for every scene of this movie. So, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. easy. It's so easy to it's do so multiples. Easy. Uh, we'll go on to Blue Velvet meets Blues Clues. A very memorable quote from Chuck Starzynski from, was it 2013, 14? Probably. You're trying to pitch me on, let's do a kid's show? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what film would you mash up with this movie to make like a total train wreck that you couldn't look away from? So I had Super Troopers meets Starship Troopers. Oh. <laughs> but they die instantly? Like, what? how does that work? They like, play I, the cat I, game I, I with the bugs? I want their stupidity and, like, antics to just be re- responsible for, like, the death of so many fucking people. <laughs> and, and oh. like, horrific, like, just, like, oh, you forgot to close the fucking airlock to the... Oh, <laughs> oh. So they're just up there in space. They're just like the crew, people. you know, like... You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, like, you know... Whatever. Look at me fucking this beetle, you know? Like, you know. So. Anyway, that's kind of what I came up with. Fuck yeah. <laughs> they did such a great job, they get recruited for the first uh, space uh, space patrol out there, you know? Yeah, they're, so they shut the highway patrol down, so yeah. they've got to be... You didn't, yeah. They got hired with the expectation that they would fail, but right. they, they they persevere. My film mashup is, I don't know why, but this popped in my head. I, lo- I would love to see, like, Super Troopers mashed with, like, Roadhouse. Like, I want them to, like, match up with... Patrick Swayze and then like I don't know they have yeah. a lot more fights in the movie and <laughs> fight the corrupt cops <laughs> Patrick Swayze no, doing perfect. roundhouse yeah. kicks you know, yeah. that's, that's like frustrating in the sense of like I'm a firm believer that like the broken lizard movies just like slowly went even more downhill and it's like dude just play into your strengths like just yeah. just make super troopers but a bar just make yeah. super troopers <laughs> but blah 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 yeah. they did that with the restaurant one that's true that one was pretty bad yeah. Slam and Salmon yeah yeah that one was really bad <laughs> no, I didn't even see that one 
Don't. That was like don't. the nail in the coffin for me. I remember renting that from Blockbuster, rolling joints, sitting down, like, all right, and then just being like, wow, I just wasted $80 worth of weed. <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, I was like, I could have done anything with this joint, you know? But, uh, oh, man, I watched this movie. I didn't mind it, but like, I, I feel like I need to rewatch because I'm sure I just like played it while I was like doing laundry. Like, oh, so yeah. That's yeah. A perfect, I heard a joke yeah. here and there. Yeah, I, I remember getting halfway through it and be like, oh, I'm going to find something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I understand the, the work and, and like everything that goes into making a movie is fucking hard. And everything, the world is against you constantly. And they keep making movies, which I'm proud of for them. But I don't want to watch them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what they're doing uh, quasi right now. Is that yeah, right Yeah, that was bad. Chuck's, yeah, Chuck has seen it. I, yeah, I just threw it on. Like, it, yeah. it was like one of those like can't sleep, 3 a.m. You know, I'm going to put something on. Maybe I'll fall asleep. So mad I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> I watched the entire thing. And yeah, it's just like they're officially just like Happy Madison, Netflix, Adam Sandler movies now. Yeah. That's like where they're at. So it's like, oh, he got hit in the balls. And then like, here's a bad joke about the invention of the selfie and like stuff like this. Just like, fuck me. Now I will say, is that officially a uh, broken lizard movie? Because it's yeah. not on their website. And didn't, oh. just a, didn't just like a platform like hire them to like all the Maybe it's like a Hulu movie. It is a Hulu, it's a Hulu yeah. movie. But still, I feel like they're all in it. Yeah. But it, it is a broken lizard Yeah, joint. I was like, I feel like mm-hmm. they wrote it. Okay, so they, that's why I'm like, I'm not letting them off the hook. I'm I, like, I don't, I don't, yeah. okay. Then I'll, hopefully they're not embarrassed of it. Maybe they just didn't like put it on their website. And I was like, maybe website they think for it's a while. Maybe it's just yeah. recent <laughs> enough that they, because it came out in like 2023, right? I think it's Watterson from Days and Confused when he's like, I love these high school girls. Oh, yeah. I keep getting older. They keep staying the same age. And like the, the Broken Lizard guys are still still playing to the 18-year-olds uh, mm-hmm. you know, with all their, their mm-hmm. movies. Yeah. That, that was my reference that I tripped over earlier. Hey, with the magic of editing, the whole <laughs> you're gonna make me look good, right? Yeah, always. Thanks, Jeff. You're gonna be like, "Wow, what a great, what a great analogy, Luke." <laughs> Speaking of making you look good, what was your uh, blue velvet meets blues quote, Luke? It's gonna hurt, but uh, I don't have one. Once again, I could not fuck with this movie. Not not in today's parlance. I totally fuck with this movie, <laughs> <laughs> but I could not I could not mess with my nostalgia and memory. I couldn't mash it with anything. Couldn't think of anything to improve it. Couldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't touch this with. I would protect this with my life. That's okay, fine. name the I biggest that. name the <laughs> biggest number you can think of, Luke. Googleplex. Googleplex million billion trillion jillion dizillion dollars make a sequel. They did that. Super Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me make Super Troopers three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, that's happening. Oh, I saw. I think that, I yeah. did read what? that too. No yeah. fucking way. Really. <sighs> Pre production. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Exactly. They, they reel uh, it back in. Go and buy no. coconut pizza, you know, vinyl. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to bring this category home, I did kind of went hobbies route. I did Super Troopers meets Bad Lieutenant. Ooh. So. <laughs> fucking dark. In this script, Farva is even more of a loose cannon. And uh, when he, you know, he's in that kind of like hiatus period, he basically goes on a violent bender. Pray for those days they finally abolish unions because uh, they could have taken him out back and shot him, but nope. <laughs> he's we, out there wreaking havoc on the town. We get that deleted scene of the gas station going up in flames as exactly. he drives away because he poured all the fucking gasoline <laughs> in that garbage can oh, to get I a hot that, dog. That was yeah, I'm surprised my... I didn't go anywhere. Oh, just, that... just to get a hot oh, no, dog. Just, just to get a hot dog. That was, <laughs> yeah. no, that was, a, that was, that was the yeah. joke. Was just to show that I, I was going to waste that. I love that. Like, I love that that's the bit. It's just <laughs> like he's, yeah. That was another band name. It was just like gas station hot dog. <laughs> like, like these days, that little bit of gas would cost like yeah. 10 hot dogs. Exactly. I don't know if it's like, it was worth it back then. Exactly. If you want to the same. I think back then it was still also like, oh, bro, that's like 10 bucks for hot dogs. Here comes Kanye. Does anybody have any pluggables? We didn't really go over this at the beginning like we thought we would. No, Casey, do you have uh, a do you have another secret podcast we don't know about? Are you? Uh... No, I wish. I I don't do anything. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we as Nostalgia Killers have um, some playing cards coming out for as an Indiegogo that will be happening soon, and then um, our drinks book we're also still coming out with. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be ready for Christmas last year, sorry to say, but uh, still <laughs> still working on it. Season one was fun. We had a lot of fun. And we have some uh, some swag that we think people will really, really want coming out soon. Yeah. On to Do We Call Jules and Vincent, the, the new framing of the verdict of the Nostalgia Killers. We have to choose whether we're going to let this live or kill it. And you can't leave until you pick one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we talked about, right? So yeah, what yeah, we yeah. agreed on. All right. that's, that's what the chains are for. <laughs> I would very obviously. I've been gushing about it the whole pod. I'm gonna let it live. It's a fucking classic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's the best thing 
any of them have ever done. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I can confidently say that. So it's, yeah, like, as far as an achievement for this comedy troupe, it's the best thing they've ever done. Probably the best thing they ever will do. I was surprised how well it held up. So I'm going to let it live. Well, same for me. I mean, you guys know my feelings on it. Man, you know, I, I do really like it, but you know, it came out at a good time for us and it was perfect at the time, but I don't know if it would, you know, relate to new people. So I don't know if I'd show it to someone today. So, you know, it holds a special place for me. Yes, I like it. Don't kill it. You know, let it just do its thing. Thing through history. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if that's a no, that's not good. a reasonable you're, answer. You're gonna let it live. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'll let it live. And Javi, do it, do it, do he's, he's it. He's done it before. <laughs> you know what, man? I I got Jules and Vincent on speed dial. Oh, oh shit! Oh yeah, I got, right. I got Jules and Vincent on speed dial. The reality is, for me, I'm not gonna watch this again. I don't think. Okay, I will be sure to have this playing in the background and any kind of <laughs> party we're at or anything. <laughs> No, that's cool. I dig it. You made that's, me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, yeah, it's totally uh, totally fine. I don't want this podcast to just be a love fest for everything we oh, talk no. about, mm-hmm. and like, not everyone should have the same opinion. And I love it. Cool. So you're gonna kill it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, all right. Yeah. that's all good. No, no. Well, on to the uh, PS de Resistance, the Sonic Death Monkey top five. What are your top five movies depicting places? You wish you worked. Yeah, top five movie jobs you wish you had. And I actually, I think I kind of messed up. I think I went like off the rails on this entirely. So <laughs> I'm very curious to hear what you guys came up with. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine's a little weird too. Is that, are all five of yours just anywhere else? Because you didn't like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the question was fine. So I mean, it's, just, it's just it's just a weird list, I think. Yeah, yeah. This is this is one I didn't quite uh, hash out. I like this because normally I pick movies I actually like. Um, there's some movies that I mean I like everything on here, but this is just like yeah, none of these are my favorite movie, so I'm excited. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. none of mine are favorite either. But the the places I would love to work in them, exactly. As I was going through my, my list of movies that I own, yeah, I want I want to be there. Uh, did you get any Casey? Man, it was really hard. I'm like I don't yeah, know. I was, I was like blanking out. I couldn't like think of like places to work and movies. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this was not one I could just Google. Yeah. Like it was, yeah. It was, it was a thinker. Okay, I guess like one good one is like uh, in Mary Poppins, the chimney sweeps, they just sing and dance on the rooftops <laughs> oh, yeah. on smoke. Like that was my, like my a really good one. I'm like, all right, I'll be dusty. And you know, they all look happy. <laughs> Max was like, Ghostbusters, you know, Ooh. The, uh, I'm afraid of, you know, that stuff sounds scary, but you know, Bill Murray will make it better. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, I, I want to work in like Hogsmeade or be like a teacher because they're all a bunch of old people. I want to bring Ooh. some fresh young life, you know, be the next yeah. <laughs> defense against be the, the dark cool arts guy. teacher. Yeah. 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 Or uh, this is a weird one, but like John Wick, you know, I don't want to be one of the assassins because I don't want to like die and I don't have to do all the stuff John Wick does. But like maybe work at the Continental, you know, be all suave and like have a coin tossed at me like, oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So that's my list. Very nice. I can go next. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so uh, number five, I got Jackass. And, 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 oh, that's okay. a little because like oh, I, 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 you know, it's it's, it's a documentary, right? You are real so, world, yeah. You so are real world. Yeah, like I feel like that would be like just get paid to do really dumb, stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, before I get well, they're still fifty and they're doing that shit. But uh, yeah. I'll just say before I get too old to do that. But like, I mean, I w- I'm not gonna be the uh, the Stevo of the group. Yeah, that's for fucking sure. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like I can do most of the shit Johnny does. Do you, want, um, do you want to just be like the snake wrangler for uh, for Bam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just be uh, me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number four, I got Monsters, Inc. And I mean towards the end of the movie. I thought about that. Because like <laughs> at the end of the movie, right, they end up having to make the children laugh to get the energy instead of scaring them. Mm-hmm. And like, I kind of already do that at my job. I make kids laugh all the oh. time. Like, and it's just, it's fun. And like, children's laughter, I feel, I know Luke is <laughs> like children. <laughs> just little he, children. He wants to do the scaring part. Little, little, yeah. children, little yeah. children's different. Uh, that's your number one. Yeah, the scary children. That's yeah, your Luke's at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he'll just be a monster. Yeah, yeah, but yeah just, exactly. Uh, yeah, just, you know, doing stand up or slapstick <laughs> stuff like that sounds great nice 2319 don't think of any less than me but so my number three is horrible bosses and i want charlie day's uh work all right i want to work for a jennifer aniston that's trying to sexually like you know take advantage of me because okay that's still the wildest part to me of like what do you mean like that sounds great that sounds like a blast yeah he's not like married in that movie right (laughs) well no i think he is like that's the whole thing or he's like engaged or something but i mean well regardless i had that on there you You heard it here first it does (laughs) yes my number two casey you had it i had john wick did yeah. you want to be like assassin? Well, I would, I would do the assassin thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hadn't thought about like, oh, yeah. 
there's a there's a nicer option, which would just be t- to be the, the the clerk guy. But um, yeah, just uh, access to a lot of cool clubs and this yeah. crazy way of currency, yada yada. You know, yeah, learn math um, skills. Yeah, yeah, it seems pretty cool. You know, that's kind of my fantasy one. Um, and then my number one. Just gonna again sound fucking horrible, but I would, I would be a fucking liar if this was not my number one. Is Wolf of Wall Street? Oh, oh all right. Make millions and millions of dollars and just get all fucking the party in the again. world. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh no, go to jail for like two months and then get out yeah. on some technicality and. Yeah. Uh, that's all a the good money one. that I have, you know, like I mean, the, the make uh, even more money legally as a public speaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they're the rights to the film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just Jeez. crash your second yacht. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Let me know how those quaaludes turn out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've got to have expired by now. They don't, yeah. they don't, they don't make them anymore. <laughs> you'll you'll have someone make them for you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to go, Jack? Sure. Uh, my number five is being a game designer for consumer recreation services in the movie The Game. I don't know if anyone's seen that, that, but yeah, one. like mm-hmm. it's one of David Fincher's first movies. It's Michael Douglas is oh, like yeah. a rich guy who has everything, and so his brother gets him like this is something you don't have. This is like a weird psychological real world like game that you don't know you're playing at all times. Mm, that was hmm. a Fincher movie. Yeah. Damn. I haven't watched that in so long. But yeah, you basically just get paid to craft insane, exploitative, violent adventures for rich people. Yeah. Where it's like you're basically trying to Ebenezer Scrooge people. Like, so you're just oh. like, yeah. It was like That's on the level cool. of the day, most dangerous game. Exactly. Like, so you're like, oh, welcome in, Mr. Bezos. And it's like, yeah. And you drop him off in like a cage of tigers and he has to figure it out. And then he realizes yeah. like, oh, maybe Amazon wasn't the greatest thing in the world for humanity. <laughs> yeah. So that'd be my number five. My number five is just being like a bartender or a shopkeep in the Shire in Lord of the Rings. Oh, uh, that fellowship. sounds great. <laughs> like yeah. before oh. things go, before things tank, you know, just hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're smoking your little, like, long opium pipe and, like, <laughs> you know, doing little, like, hairy foot dances while you serve mead. Like, yeah, it sounds great. Oh, it does. Wow. I like uh, that. <laughs> my number three is being a clerk at the Be Kind Rewind video store mm. uh, because you could literally get paid to make movies. You get paid to swede all the films on the shelves. <laughs> so it's just you and Jack Black or most Def just like, oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. I guess we're going to make yeah. like the harder they come today or like, you know, Driving Miss Daisy or like whatever thing they're remaking because <laughs> somebody rented it. So that sounds fun. And then my number two and number one are basically the same job. <laughs> so number two is being uh, Christopher Lloyd, the librarian character in the Page Master. <laughs> Page Master. Because you get to dip in and out of any book you want you work in a magical library where you get to like yeah obviously yeah. he uses it to teach like Macaulay Culkin a lesson or whatever but like you can just go hang out in the Scarlet Letter and then peace out once like, she gets that A you know cool. you're just like, yeah. you get to go swashbuckle and then you're like you know in Robert Caruso or something and you're like alright this is where he like learns the lesson I'm, I'm out and like this is uh, <laughs> that was Christopher but, Lloyd yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I do not remember that being him and then my number one is the same job. It's being a theater attendant in the movie The Last Action Hero. Yeah. Uh, so you get to dip in and out of any movie you want with a real life like golden ticket, basically. Yeah. Can't wait to do that movie. We gotta, oh, yeah. we gotta do that one here. No, that one's coming. I feel like we should do that this season. Uh, my number five is uh, at the quick stop in Clerks. I almost put that. <laughs> I, either that or the video store next door. Yeah. It's just gonna, it's just gonna be, yeah, that'd be me. Nice. Number four would be uh, anywhere on the seventh and a half floor in the Martin Flemmer building and being John Malkovich. Oh, yeah. Uh, Not because I really want to work there, but just because I'd have like cool Instagram photos of like the the half floor. (laughs) Uh, Number three would be a roadie for Hedwig. Hell yeah. Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Fun until you, you know, she tears up your passport. <laughs> well, that's why I'd be stuck there. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, number two, I would be uh, in the Sneakers Heist crew. You guys probably haven't seen Sneakers. Oh. Well, we'll cover that at some point. You guys talked about it on uh, Hackers? Probably, yeah. yeah. When did that happen? Was it 95, 96? Something like that. Robert Redford, Dan Aykroyd, a bunch of like hmm. Sidney Poitier, um, big actors. I, I recommend it. Stinkers. Sneakers. 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 Yeah. Sneakers. Sneakers is a different movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, different one. And then my number one is uh, anywhere on the Steve Zissou crew oh, on the Life, oh. Life Aquatic. Oh, oh, the Belafonte. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, I just got to say, like, um, I'm re- I've recently gone back into a job that's, that has me on the water, and I'm just remembering how much fucking fun it is. Playing guitar out at sea is just the most, like, the like, Sue Jorge in, in Steve Zissou, like, mm. the guy playing, like, the David Bowie covers. That's, like, probably the most romantic thing ever, just yeah. to ever experience or do. I'm just imagining that. That sounds really nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, uh, that's the end of our show. I don't know how to end this anymore because we changed everything. I think oh. it's a perfect way to end. Uh, <laughs> if you're still listening thank You're still you for listening, listening. <laughs> uh as always i have been chuck starzinski i have been luke loans i have been javier martinez 
I have been Casey O'Connell. And we have been the Nostalgia Killers. Bang, bang. Bang, bang.